Hello, I'm Lawrence Anthony, and in this video I'm going to explain how to use the AntConc concordance tool. In this video I'll just cover the basic features, and another video will look at some of the advanced features of this tool. So, first I'm going to load in a corpus. Uh, another video shows how to download AntConc and get started with the software, so I'll go straight ahead and go to uh, File, Open Files, and I'm going to navigate to the brown corpus, which is a one million word corpus of general English. And for this um, demonstration, I'm going to use the uh, subcategory of the brown corpus, which is related to journalism or press English. So that's categories A, B, and C. So I load those into the uh, and con software. I go to file view just to make sure that files are loaded correctly, which they are. So now I can start using my concordance tool. The concordance tool allows you to search for a word or phrase that you're interested in in your corpus. And then it will show you the kind of patterns that it appears in. So, for example, if I'm interested in the word report, I would type the word report in the search box here at the bottom of the screen and then I can hit start or I can hit return and the software will go through the corpus and find all the hits for report and show them in the middle here of the screen and it will also show you the words that appear on the left or on the right of the search term. Now if you want to have a little bit more of the context you would go to the search window size uh, box here and then you would increase this uh, to, for example, 100. And that means roughly 100 characters to the left and 100 characters to the right of the search term. So if I now search again, you'll see that we have more context. Now you'll see that uh, we have 42 hits and these hits are appearing in the order that they occur in the corpus at the moment. Uh, but in this ordering, it is quite difficult to see any kind of patterns. So if you want to see patterns, it's good to sort the results, for example, by the words to the left or the right of the search term. So we can do that at the bottom of the screen here using the quick sort. There's three levels of sort, and the default is one word to the right, and then two words to the right, and then three words to the right. So if I click the sort button, you'll see what it is. So the search term is still highlighted in blue, but now the software has uh, sorted all the words to the right. So we can see now that we have at the top although, and then and, back, called, and we go down and we can see um, those words ordered correctly. It then orders the results to the second word to the right, and then the third word to the right. And we can start seeing a, a few more of the patterns now. For example, we have report of occurring a few times, report on occurring a few times, and so on. At the bottom here, we have report to. We can also sort in different ways. For example, I can sort to the left, one word to the left, two words to the left, three words to the left, and if we do this, we see a different kind of pattern. We see what comes before report, like labor report, a Jackson report, a short report, and then we see the definite article, the report, occurring a few times at the bottom, and to report. When you're looking through the results, you may actually want to see where the result appeared in the original file. And to do that, you would just float your cursor over the search hit and you can see a little finger appears and if you click then on that word then the um, software will jump to the file view tool and show you exactly where that word appears in the original file. So it allows you to see even more context. So using a combination of uh, searching and sorting we can start seeing lots of patterns for example, I can type reporting, I can get the patterns 
for reporting. There are not so many here, but if I sort them, we can see what happens to the left. Or we can go back to the ordering on the right. And we can see reporting, or we can uh, type reported and see what would happen. And we can see immediately there are lots of hits for reported. In fact, 46 here. We can also search for phrases. For example, we can search for now report on, which we noticed a few moments ago, and we can sort those results and see what happens after report on. And we can read also type in a phrase like to report and see how that is being used in the corpus. If you want to search for report, reporting, reported, and so on, um, perhaps a, a better way to do the search is to use a wildcard. So a wildcard, for example, star here, or asterisk, means uh, zero or more characters following the previous letter. So this means report, and then ed or ing or any other letters. So if I start this, you'll see the results now. Uh, there's a lot more results, 135 in fact. And you can see we have reports, reportedly, reported, and so on. We can also sort these results. Here it's good to sort on the zero uh, word, which means the center word. And then for example, 1r, 2r. If we sort those, we can see now all the ex examples of report first, and then we can see reported, reportedly, reporters, reporting, reports, and so on. Anconc has quite a few wildcards that you can use, um, and they're all listed in the global settings, which I won't show here, but perhaps in the advanced uh, feature tutorial later. Above the search box here, you will see that we have um, a few options. For example, here we're actually searching for words, but we don't have to. We could just search for a string of characters, starting with report, or for example, even rep. And if we do this, we will then uh, produce all the uh, strings rep in the corpus. Uh, usually it seems that rep um, is at the beginning of a word, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. For example, I could also search for a string like port or por, and then it will find all these strings of por, and you can see that some of these are in the middle uh, of words. We can also sort those in the same way as before. Notice we're sorting on the word with the por string in it, and so, P-O-R, sporadic, temporarily, contemporaries, and so on. So then you can see the pattern that occurs with that search. Coming back to uh, the uh, search options, if I type in the word report, uh, I'll use words, you'll see that we're getting hits for report with a lowercase r, and also with an uppercase r. In fact, the whole word is uppercase here. If you actually are interested in only looking for, for example, lowercase um, versions of report, we would click on the case option here, and that would force it to use case when doing the search. So now there are no uppercase examples in our list. Alternatively, if we want to look for a capital R at the beginning of the word report, we would add an R now, and we can see that there is only one example of report starting with the capital letter. If we use all capitals now, we can find all the hits, which are just three. So case allows you to search for uppercase and lowercase separately. Often the default is that it's turned off. So when we search now, we will get all the hits as before. Anconc also allows you to do regular expression searches, if you know what those are. If we turn on the regex, or regular expression option, you'll notice the case and words options are grayed out. 
because they are no longer meaningful. And then we can build up a regular expression to find what we are interested in. This is a little complicated, but it, for example, we would start with a word boundary. Then we may have the letter R followed by any letter from A to Z. Uh, and that would be more, one or more of them. We would have a non-greedy search, finishing with the letter T, and then another boundary, word boundary. This would allow you to search for any word, uh, starting with R, finishing with T. As you can see here, R, T, R, T. And it allows you to do some quite advanced searches. You can, of course, then sort the results, as we've been doing before, to find out what words fit those conditions. Coming back to our original search report, uh, if you want to compare your results, uh, one way is to use the clone results button. If we click this, we will see a little window with the results that we've just generated. And you can look at those. And while looking at those, then you can come back and do another search, for example, reported. You can then clone those results. And then we can get uh, both results showing, and we can see the differences. So clone res cloning the results is sometimes useful when you want to compare two sets of results. Now, the concordance tool has uh, many features, and some of them are hidden initially. But uh, we can reveal them by clicking, for example, on the advanced button here, or going to the tool preferences and looking at some of the features listed there. But I'll leave that for another video. Okay, so that's the basic features of the concordance tool. Thank you.